The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed, it's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. The streets will never love you back. Pow. What's up, guys? Well, I got another story for you today. It's not a bad day of news story, but it's a prison story. It's about a guy I met in Lewisburg Penitentiary. His name was Herbie Sperling. He's a legend down in uh, Harlem, uh, Hell's Kitchen. Anywhere in New York, anywhere in the prison system, if you mention his name, everybody knows him. Uh, he used to do business with Nicky Bonds, and he was a part of the French Connection. He probably was the French Connection. But back in the day, him growing up, he hung out around, when he was a kid, these are the guys he looked up to, a guy like Dutch Schultz, okay? This guy was a serious guy back in the day, Dutch Schultz. He ends up getting murdered later on in life, but uh, he was uh, a gangster, and he didn't take no shit from nobody, and a lot of people feared this man back in the day. And eventually he had problems with uh, Lucky Luciano. Luciano ends up getting him killed, and, uh, you know, the story goes on. But Herbie Sperling was... Uh, a hell of a gangster growing up, and he turned out to be a serious fella. This is Herbie Sperling. I think this might have been back in the 60s or something, early 70s. But uh, this is one of the photos uh, he took in the precinct when he got collared. But there's a big story behind Herbie Sperling. You know, Herbie Sperlin is not just one of your typical wise guys because he wasn't straightened out. He was Jewish descent. I'm going to share a couple photos of Herbie Sperling with you. Now, uh, this is a photo I took with Herbie when I was uh, in Lewisburg Penitentiary back in 93, 94. This photo was taken. Herbie is the short guy with the glasses on. Next to him, the taller guy is Manny Madonna a guy that I became very friendly with. And, uh, you know, meeting these two guys back in the day, I'll tell you, it really meant a lot. Till this day, my memory of these guys are very uh, drilled in my head, how they were. Herbie was like uh, a mayor in Lewisburg. He had a lot of respect, and he did his time very well. And he demanded respect. And he was a man's man to the day he died. He died at the age of 79 a couple years back. But I'm going to share some stories with him uh, going back, some newspaper articles and some photos of him back in the day. Now, Herbie was a part of the French Connection. He was doing business with Nicky Bonds. Nicky Bonds was a black gangster out of Harlem and Manhattan back in the day. And what he did was he made the New York Times, Mr. Untouchable. This is Nicky Bonds. The police say he may be Harlem's biggest drug dealer, but can they prove it? And what happened was eventually they got him down on a Rico, maybe a murder. He ends up cooperating. He brings in a whole bunch of Italian guys, Herbie Sperling, Manny Madonna, and so on. But Nicky Bonds at the time was a serious guy. You can see him with these uh, women, you know, very flashy. Uh, I remember Maddie Madonna telling me a story where Maddie would drive an empty trunk, an empty car with an empty trunk to one location. And Nicky Bonds would pull up with a trunk full of cash, and Maddie would have a trunk full of heroin. And they would just switch cars. 
Maddie would get in the trunk full of cash, and Nikki Bonds would get in the trunk full of heroin, and they would just drive away. And that's how these guys did business back then. These guys were serious guys. But there's also a photo here I want to share with you. Jewish gangsters, Dutch shirts, Herbie Sperling, the Purple Gang. Now, these guys back in the day, these were some serious guys. Listen, these guys back in the day would kill you in a minute. You know, they were Jewish gangsters, and they had a lot of respect. From Maya Lansky to Louis Lepke, Herbie Sperling, and so on. I mean, the Jews used to have a lot of respect and a lot of power back then. And they are the ones who actually taught the mob how to beat a mob and create the five family, families. Louis uh, Lepke was one of the first guys to get executed uh, in that organization, the mob. And uh, it was unheard of. But, uh, you know, back then the mob ran deep. And uh, Herbie Sperling, Manny Madonna, these guys were not ones to fuck with. But this is a photo back in the day of uh, Herbie Sperling with his wife, Josephine. I actually met his wife back in the day. And uh, I went to a wedding with her when uh, long, long time ago. But anyway, Herbie Sperling and his wife, Josephine, in the early 1970s, this photo was taken. He was among the first defendants to be sentenced to life in prison without parole after federal judges were empowered to impose that penalty. Now, I remember when Herbie Sperling got sentenced, he told the judge, you don't sentence me, I sentence you. And that's how he was. He was a tough guy. Herbie Sperling killed a lot of people. And he was not one to fuck with. A lot of guys fed him. Herbie Sperling, a convicted drug dealer from Hell's Kitchen, who was accused of ordering the execution of Vincent C. Papa, the fellow mobster who masterminded the brazen death of 400 pounds of French Connection heroin. This guy, 400 pounds of French Connection heroin. Right here. This is Jerry Papa's brother, Vinny Papa. Okay, and Mr. Sperling was accused of hiring three convicts to murder him in a federal prison, believing he had become a police informant. Mr. Sperling was acquitted. Mr. Papa was fatally stabbed eight times in a prison courtyard, courtyard, and that was Jerry Papa's brother. That's pretty, uh, you know, some serious stuff right there. It just goes to show you that Herbie Sperling was not one to fuck with. Uh, Herbie Spillin passed away 79 years old. His death, which had been announced, was confirmed by the Bureau of Prisons, which did not specify the cause. And uh, obviously, he probably died of a heart attack or something. He was being held at the time at the Medical Center Devons, a long-term care facility about 40 miles west of Boston. Mr. Sperling was among the first defendants to be sentenced to life in prison without parole. After federal judges were empowered to impose the death penalty in the early 1970s in response to what was viewed as a national crisis over narcotics, crime, and addiction, he spent nearly three-fourths of his life behind bars, including the last 45 years since his arrest in 1973. He got arrested in 1973. He's been in jail since then. And subsequent conviction on drug trafficking charges. Prosecutors called him the operational kingpin of a highly organized, structured, and ongoing narcotics network that smuggled heroin from France and distributed it mostly through black and Hispanic dealers on the East Coast. Mr. Sperling had a well-deserved reputation for violence. Herbie was a very violent guy. That's what they're saying. Obviously, we know that. Look at him in this mugshot. You can tell this guy was not one to be uh, messed with. In 1977, he was indicted on charges of hiring 
three fellow inmates at the federal penitentiary in Atlanta to murder Mr. Papa, whom he suspected of turning police informant. Mr. Sperling was acquitted in the conspiracy, but two other defendants were convicted of fatally stabbing Mr. Papa in the back and chest at least eight times in a prison courtyard. Mr. Papa had been convicted of choreographing the audacious death by rogue police officers of tens of millions of dollars worth of drugs from the New York Police Department's evidence room in Lower Manhattan in the early 1970s. 400 pounds of heroin, imagine that, and replacing it with bags of flour and cornstarch. Talk about that crime. The crimes kick-started a consequential corruption investigation of the police. Right away, the police were investigated when all this went down. Much of the heroin had been seized in 1962 in the Bronx from the car in which it had been sh shipped from the French port of city Marseille. The successful investigation in the case inspired the Oscar-winning film, 1971 movie, The French Connection. Mr. Sperling was also suspected in the death of Louis J. Mileto, whom police identified as a courier for the Sperling heroin ring. Mr. Mileto's frozen, headless, limbless torso was found in 1972 in the trunk of a gutted car in the Hudson Valley. He was identified by his teeth, which was found in his stomach. Investigators said he had swallowed them during a vicious beating. At 5'5", five five barrel-chested high school dropout, Mr. Sperling was volatile, foul-mouthed, and unapologetic. When the police asked him to identify the source of two pistols and an axe handle that were found in his trunk of his leased car and that were later linked to three murders, he replied, Damn, if I know, adding, using an explosive, and you can be sure I'll never, ever rent a car from Avis again. Herbie had big charisma. He was like a James Cagney character. Even at his sentencing, when he faced mandatory life imprisonment, he affected a James Cagney swagger and delivered a tirade in which he refused, as he put it, to beg for mercy. That's how tough Herbie Sperling was. He wouldn't even beg for mercy, mercy, in which James Cagney ultimately did in 1938 film, Angels with Dirty Faces. Instead, Herbie Sperling described himself as a known bookmaker and gambler who had been victimized by false narcotics charges and facing the vulnerable judge, Milton Pollack, boosted I am and always will be a better man than you, Herbie Sperling told the judge. All I want is justice, Mr. Sperling insisted, which I couldn't get. To which Judge Perlick replied, Mr. Sperling has eloquently requested a just and fair sentence. The judge then meted out the maximum of each of several charges. Mr. Sperling was born on December 29th. 1938 in Hell's Kitchen, the gritty Midtown West neighborhood that was notorious breeding ground for hooligans. His father, Irving, a jewelry salesman, died when Herbert was one years old. His mother was Cecil Shavitz Sperling. Both parents were Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe, and after Herbie Sperling's death, someone posted on Facebook the message, Herbie Sperling, rest in peace, the last true Jewish gangster, one of his sons noted in an urology. According to a 1994 profile in Prison Life magazine, a copy of which resides in the New York Public Library's research collections, he was sent to reformatory at the age of 13 years old for truancy, worked as a bouncer, and boxed as a featherweight. At 19, he was arrested in a heroin case with Joseph Valachi, 
At the age of 19, he was arrested with Joseph Valachi. That's how in depth he was with the mob. He was arrested with Joe Valachi, the gangster who in 1963 became the first mob leader to admit publicly that the mafia existed. His admission might have explained Mr. Sperling's empathy towards informers, although Mr. Papa was apparently squealing on, cor on corrupt cops, not his organized crime colleagues. What happened to Anna, Mr. Sperling was quoted as saying in Prison Life magazine, as a kid, I was taught that being a tatty tale was a bad thing. And it sure was, absolutely. Mr. Sperling married Josephine Charamante, who died in 2001. He is survived by his sons, Nicholas, Gus, and Guy, and nine grandchildren. Mr. Sperling transplanted the family from Little Italy in Manhattan to Belmore on Long Island, where his fleet of three pleasure boats were moored nearby. Mr. Sperling at the United States Penitentiary in Lewisburg Penitentiary in 1994, Mr. Spillin, a convicted drug dealer, now he spent three quarters of his life in prison. He wanted us to have a better life, his children said. That's why they moved to Long Island. Well, Herbie Sperlin, I got to say, he was a hell of a guy. I met him in Lewisburg Penitentiary at the age of 23 years old. When I got to Lewisburg, he was there waiting for me. And I'll tell you, I... Couldn't have had a better reception than Matty Madonna and Herbie Sperling. And Herbie Sperling made me sell in J Block. He was on the first tier. I was on the second tier. And I have a lot of memories with him. And he was a hell of a guy, a tough guy. He was definitely a class act. And uh, I remember Herbie forever. In my eyes, he will always be a tough guy and a stand-up guy. This is a quick photo of Herbie, uh, Manny Madonna, the future actor in Boss Lucchese crime family, Ronald Lorenzo, a soldier in the Bonanno family, uh, Herbie, a Jewish gangster, and uh, Ernie Boy is in this photo too. But I'll tell you, I think about Herbie, and this guy went away in 1973. The money he made, the people he killed, this guy learned from the old time wise guys back in the day. At the age of 19 years old, he was arrested with Joe Valachi. Just think about that. Joe Valachi, the first guy who squealed and told. Herbie had some reputation. He was, uh, he definitely had this guy stabbed up, Papa. And Papa's brother was uh, Jerry Papa, another mad, notorious gangster. But these guys robbed 400 kilos of heroin out of a police station and replaced it with cornstarch and flour. Think about that crime and how much money they made on the street. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, Jimmy Calandra, A Bad Avenue Story. Like I said, subscribe to my Patreon. I'm creating a future get-together, a meet-and-greet. Anyone who is a part of my Patreon channel is going to be invited. I mean, it's all going to be invited, but the information will be on my Patreon channel. So I would love for you guys to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this story of Herbie Sperling. I had the opportunity of meeting this guy, being in his company. He used to slap me with a stack of napkins, and I used to go to the movie theater, and the first two row of seats was ours. And he taught me a lot. And out of all the guys I met in my lifetime, Herbie Sperling was a legitimate tough guy. How he used to walk the red top, taught me how to do time, spending time with him. I went to a few bar mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs with him inside prison. I used to wear the beanie cap with him. But he was a hell of a character. And uh, I'll tell you. It was a pleasure meeting him and being in his company. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this story. Until my next one, I love you guys. Everyone, have a great day. Bye, guys.
The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed, it's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. The streets will never love you back.